Welcome to another video tutorial of the free and open source EEZ Studio. In this video, we will show you how to create a simple login page and some basics related to widget styling. So let's go. For this demo we will use a dashboard type project. On the new project page, we will click on the templates tab and from the list we will choose the dashboard that will serve as a template. Here we need to enter the name of the project and confirm in which location it will be created. A new project has been opened that has a minimum of elements as set in the selected template. We will use the initial text widget as the basis for creating the name of the login form. We will change the initial text to a new one. Now we will resize the widget so that the text can fit in one line. The next thing we can do is change the style of the text. Instead of using the default style, we will create a new one. In the properties widget, we need to specify which style we want to use in the style section. Notice that when we enter the name of the style the field will be marked red because that style does not exist yet. So let's add it. We will do this in the styles panel. We click on the add option and enter the name of the new style. We will select that style from the list so that we can change its attributes in the properties panel. We will set the font size and weight, alignment and color. The next thing we will do is add a text input widget that will be used to enter the email address. We select it in the components palette panel and drag and drop it onto the page. Let's expand it a bit and change a few attributes. Let's start with placeholder. It is the text that is displayed as default before we enter something in that field. The next thing we will define is value. It determines where the text entered in this field will end. We will define it to be a global variable. This field is also marked red because the entered variable still does not exist. Let's create it. We will do this in the variables panel. We define the name and type of the variable, which for this purpose will be of type string. The default value should remain empty. The new text input we will add is for the password. We will align it with the previous one and expand it to be the same width. We define the placeholder and the variable in which the entered text will be stored. We create a new variable. The next thing we can add is the remember me checkbox, which is indispensable for login forms. Drag and drop, center it and determine in which variable our choice will be saved. We need to add a new variable once more. This one will be of boolean type because here we can only have two states. Default value false defines that it will be unchecked at start. We can also change some style attributes of this widget. This time we will not create a new one, but it will be set in the default style, for example we can set the alignment. We can still change the position a little and that will be fine. Now all we need is a sign-in button that should confirm our entry and take us to a new page where the login progress will be displayed. Let's find the button widget in the components palette and drag it onto the page. Make it the same width as the text of the input field. We will name it Sign In. We will also play with the style of this widget. This widget can have two styles, default and when it is in disabled state, so we will create two new global styles. Let's set its default to a new style that we will call button. We will call the new style for the disabled state button disabled. Let's create them in the styles panel. If we want the button disabled style to inherit everything from the button style, we just need to position it in the list of styles so that it is under the button style. Drag and drop and it becomes a child of the button style. Now we can define the desired attributes of the new styles. For button style we can set alignment, color, and background. We can remove the border, so we'll set the border size to zero and we'll round the corners of the button a bit. Now we will implement some more advanced styling using CSS settings. For example, we can define a box shadow by directly entering the CSS definition for the size and color of the shadow. Additionally, in additional CSS, we will set the color of the button to change on hover. We will also add that the shadow disappears when clicked and the button moves to have a push effect. Now we have enough to test how it will look in runtime. 
we can see that the hover button does not change its color. Let's correct that. And test again to see if the color changes. The next thing we're going to do is set some attributes of the button disabled style. We will change his color and background. An indication that it is no longer inherited is the black square on the right. We don't even want a box shadow in this style. We will also prohibit changing the color on hover. We can immediately test how the button will look in the disabled state when the disabled button style will be applied. We can return the initial state of the button to default. With this we have defined everything we want on the home page. The next thing we will do is add an action so that when we press this button, a new page is displayed where the login progress is displayed. For that we will use the show page action. Please note that the button widget has one output through which the execution will continue when we click on the button. That output will need to be connected to the input of the show page action. For that, we position the cursor on the output, click and drag to the input in the show page action until the color of the flow line changes to green. This is an indication that the connection will be established when the mouse is released. The next thing we need to do is set the page that will be displayed when this action is performed. The name of the page can be directly entered in the page field or selected from the list of existing ones. We only have our main page in the list, so we will create a new one. We will do this in the Pages panel, by clicking on the Add option and defining the name of the new page. The newly created page appeared in the list of pages in the Pages panel. We will change its style so that it also has a gray background. Now we can also set the name of the page in the Show Page action. Let's go back to the Sign in Progress page and add widgets. We will add a text widget to display the page name. We will set its style to Page Title. No text is displayed because the text is not set. So we'll do it now. This is an opportunity to see how it is possible to use an expression for a value consisting of static text and the contents of the username variable that will need to be entered on the home page. The expression must be entered inside curly braces. Let's add a new spinner widget. We can resize it, but this time we will not use the mouse for that, but by directly editing the width and height attributes in the position and size section. We will position it right in the center of the page. The last thing we will add is a button widget that will be used to return to the previous page. We will also change its styles to match the appearance of the button on the main page. Here we will also need a show page action that we will connect to the output of the abort button. We set the action to return us to the main page. We can test what we have done so far. We will enter the email address and password. We see that the password is displayed when entering it, which is not acceptable. We will change that soon. Let's click on the sign in button to see what happens. And here we are on the next page, as we want it. If we click on the abort button, it will return us to the previous page. Let's go back to the editor to solve the password problem. We select the main page and the text input widget for the password. In the specific properties section, we will check the password attribute, which is used to mask the entered text. OK, let's test it again. Let's see what needs to be done so that the sign in button is not enabled if both fields are not filled, as is the case now. Select the sign in button and select the enabled attribute that determines the runtime status of the button. We will set an expression that requires that both username and password variables are not empty. A double AND is a logical AND operation. We can test this now. We can see that it is disabled at the beginning because both fields are empty. Entering only email is not enough. Only when we enter something in the password field will the button become enabled. The last thing we will show in this demo is how to add a condition that the password cannot be shorter than four characters. Let's go back to the editor. In the existing expression of the enabled attribute, we will add a test of the length of the password string. This time we will use the expression builder as a help. We select password again, in the list of functions we select string length, which has one parameter of type string. 
There we will enter the password variable and add the condition that the length should be greater than 3 characters. Let's test it now. We enter the address, and only when entering the fourth character for the password will the sign in button become enabled. Here we have come to the end of this demo. Don't forget that you can download EEZ Studio for free. Thank you for your attention, until next time.